So today I'm going to show you what is on my mastering chain and I feel like I'm going to get some flack for this in the comments. However, if you've been struggling to master your music, just like I once did, then this video could definitely help you. Now, before I show you, I'm going to play a portion of a track that I've already made with this mastering chain enabled just to prove to you that this works. As you can see, everything is nice and loud, no audible digital distortion whatsoever, and we're hitting around minus 5.4 LUFS, which is more than loud enough for, you know, any modern track. So I won't keep you waiting any longer. This is what is on my mastering chain. What the hell? Yes, it's Sausage Fatner. Nothing more, nothing less. I can already feel all of the mastering engineers aggressively typing away in the comments explaining how this is the wrong way to do things, this, this is, is the, the wrong, wrong way, way to, to master your, your track. track. And before I tried it, I was probably thinking them similar sort of things, but then I did try it and it just made my workflow so much easier. So let me explain. So Sausage Fattener is simply acting as a soft clipper here allowing me to drive my mix as loud as I can into it until I start to hear that digital distortion. There's no compression taking place, there's no multiband dynamics, it's just clipping the signal at zero, essentially. Now, as you might have guessed, I'm obviously not a mastering engineer, and I often battled with these complex mastering chains whilst I was learning to produce music over the past few years. But what I am is a producer, and a big part of being a producer is being able to mix properly. And simplifying my mastering chain to such a degree, I've found comes with some major, but some rather unexpected benefits. I'll show you what I mean. So benefit number one is that it essentially forces me to shift my focus over to getting the mix right in the first place. When I'm producing a track with Sausage Fattener on the master, I can instantly tell if an element is too loud or if my mix is off balance and there's something that I need to correct based on that digital distortion. For example, in this scenario, I can tell that my kick drum is too loud and the unwanted distortion I get from Sausage Fattener indicates that I might need to turn it down or rebalance the EQ. So it's weirdly a great tool for helping me achieve a balanced mix straight from the off. Benefit number two is that there's no surprises when I'm mastering my music. Because I usually put Sausage Fatner on the master at a very early stage in the production process, even if I'm just like sketching out a rough idea, I know exactly how the final product is going to sound. And there's no multi-band compressors or anything else colouring the sound in a way that might complicate any corrections that I might want to make in the mix after I might have completed that mastering process the first time around, kind of combines the two processes together rather than kind of separating them as two individual tasks. Also, you might find that if you're releasing music with a label, they might want their mastering engineer to do a master of the track. And if so, that's absolutely fine. The unmastered version, the mix that I send over to that mastering engineer, isn't going to sound too different at all to my mastered version with Sausage Fatner on the mastering chain. Meaning that the mix is already sounding very balanced and very close to the finished product. So whatever the mastering engineer has to do, they probably won't actually have to do a whole lot. They'll probably be quite appreciative of the solid mix that you've given them. And you're not going to be surprised with how that final master sounds that they're gonna send back to you before it gets released. Benefit number three is that it's just fast. I don't even consider mastering as a process anymore, it's just completely gone from my workflow. I can very quickly make a remix of a track, for example, get the whole idea sketched out onto the door, slap on Sausage Fattener, adjust my mix a bit, and boom, it's ready to test in the club that very same night. And then based on how it sounds in the club once I've tested it, I can go back, adjust my mix a little bit, get the balance even more sort of dialed in finish the track and then it's ready for release or ready to at least send to a label. And by the way, I've released many tracks using this exact method with just Sausage Fattener on the master. Some of which have been particularly successful in streaming 
and some that have been played in clubs all over the world. Okay, let's just take a step back for a sec. Sausage Fattener is known for its heavy distortion effect demonstrated by the angry sausage face. However, you might have noticed that I've got both the fatness and the colour knobs both turned all the way down. And the reason for this is because we're purely using it for its soft clipper. We're not looking to colour the sound in any way or get any extra distortion at all. Now, you might be watching this wondering, well, can't I just use any soft clipper? And the answer is yes. You just have to bear in mind that each soft clipper does colour the sound in a slightly different way. I just happen to like how Sausage Fattener does it. You might also be thinking, well, you've just shown us how this sounds on a heavy bassline track with a fat, heavy, distorted lead synth. Will this work on other styles of music? And the answer is yes, but also no. If you're making something like country music, for example, where you're wanting to preserve them nice, luscious, dynamic, acoustic guitars, this might not work as it might be a bit too extreme. But if you're making modern pop, rap or dance music, you should be absolutely fine. But here's a couple of examples, um, just in case you're wondering. So as you can hear by those examples, we can still achieve a nice, loud, clean, balanced master just using Sausage Fattener and getting our mix right. And I'm not saying that this is the one and the only way to master your music. Like I say, I'm not a mastering engineer, but if you're struggling to master your music and you're struggling with complex mastering chains, I bet that if you start using this approach and using this method with a bit of practice, a bit of patience, a bit more sort of work on your mix, you will end up with a better mix and overall a better master. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something from this. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below as well. And if you want more music production tips and advice, please do subscribe. I'm aiming to put out a new video every single week and all my links for where you can reach me are down in the description box below. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.